important process in the risk management right uh, when there are two different kinds of exposures i want to see what is the kind of relationship between these two of them so that if one of them is generating a loss can the other one give me a profit or vice versa or if one of them is uh, leading me to a loss will the other one also go into a loss so the dependence structure between the variables is very heavily uh, explained by the concept of correlation and what we would be seeing is the correlation as a process will be more and more effective only if i am looking at the linear structure between the variables linear dependency between the variables but if uh, uh, if the distribution and uh, uh, generally what we see is the correlation is much more effective if the variables are more or less normal in nature but if the variables follow any other kind of a distribution irrespective of looking at their underlying distribution if i am trying to find out the dependence structure between the variables i am classifying them as copulas so we would uh, try to understand the concept of these two things see how we can try to bring out the correlation between the variables and try to use them in the risk management process especially uh, lots and lots of applications in the world of risk management depend on the usage of both correlations as well as copulas whenever we look at two exposures i just have to see what is the kind of correlation what is the kind of interdependency that is existing between these two variables if it is very high positive which means there is no diversification uh, effect that is coming because of these exposures so if one of them is leading into a loss there is a good chance that the other one also can trigger me to a loss which means the total exposure is going to be phenomenally higher but if i see that the correlation is coming down even the exposure is also coming down the risk is coming down and the moment i see that the correlation is going negative and negative it even gives me an it even gives me a, a kind of an impact that the loss on one of the exposures can be offsetted through the gain on the other one so that's one of the prime reasons i end up computing the correlation between the set of or pair of exposures and so so from a risk manager standpoint how well i can estimate the correlation between the variables how well i can estimate the volatilities based on the past data is what is a critical aspect for any of the risk managers two key estimates which are essential from an effective risk management perspective not just looking at what are the volatilities and standard deviations of the variables but along with that looking at how the correlation between the variables is going to change in future based on the historical data understanding and uh, the same extension will be done to the world of copulas especially to define the correlation structure even if the underlying uh, probability distribution of the variables is not known even when the distribution of the underlying variables is not a normal is not known just by uh, uh, mapping it to uh, some known copula distribution we are going to estimate the correlation structures we'll look at that aspect and what we see is copulas have very heavy applications one modeling the default correlation will uh, will look at it uh, as we move further if there are uh, 10 different uh, bonds what is uh, and each bond has a different uh, probability of uh, uh, default and uh, so if that's the case uh, and this is the kind of uh, correlation that is existing between them how do i really estimate what is the probability that all of them can default what is the estimated default rate overall if i want those kind of uh, evaluations then i can very well rely on the copula based approach even we will see that various uh, portfolio of loans to compute their value at risk 
they will rely on the copula based approach because they it is more of a measure of interdependency between the two variables and even basel 2 as a part of its uh, regulatory guidelines it has uh, taken the help of copulas for determining the capital requirements and even the credit lots and lots of credit derivatives get valued using the function of copulas which means the understanding of the correlation between the variables and the copula functions is very much essential for doing effective risk management when it comes to the world of correlation we know just to define as a formula we say that the correlation between the two values between the two variables is nothing but the covariance between the two divided by the variance of uh, or divided by the standard deviation of both of them separately the multiplication of the standard deviations of each one of them that is what is bringing the world of correlation if i look at it in the data here let's say i have taken for the last one year i have taken uh, the index values of the auto index bsc auto index bsc it index and bsc sensex let's say i want to find out the correlation right let's say i want to find out the correlation between auto index and it index all i am doing is i am trying to find out the covariance between so for the first of all i want to do it on the returns not on the index so i'll take the returns i'll say returns of auto index wherein i'll take the logarithm of the current value divided by the previous so the returns on the auto index go to these numbers i would take the returns on the it index as well going with the same formulas the return on the it index is giving me these numbers return on the it index is going with these numbers similarly i would take the returns on the sensex which also would give me some daily returns so these are the daily returns on each of them let me look at the expected right average returns of the auto index average daily return on the auto index if i see that it is somewhere around uh, 0 0.001 which i translate uh, will translate them into percentage now average daily returns i can take for it index which also works out to be uh, around 0 0.0005 and similarly i can take the average daily returns of the sensex which works out as this now try converting each of them into percentages on a daily basis you hardly find them just around zero right but yes they are slightly smaller values so these are what i can find as the average returns of each one of them and now i can very well find out the covariance of the returns let's say between auto and it i can find out the covariance of the returns between auto and it which comes out to be this small value covariance of the returns between auto and sensex right i would get some other number on the similar lines auto and sensex if i am taking the covariance this is the smaller value and similarly i take the covariance of the returns between it index returns and the sensex which also works out on some other lines which works out to these numbers similarly uh, i can find out uh, the standard deviation the standard deviation of the returns of the auto index